was the first sort of really big project that I got to work on. And uh, yeah, John, John Bates and me had done a few other documentaries um, prior to that, um, I think Hootsman and a couple of others. But this one came along and it was a big deal because, I mean, Rob Morrison was a serious, um, well, he's an amazing photographer. So we were really excited about doing it. And also because Robin was really ill and it was clear that he wasn't going to be around much longer, there was a real responsibility on that. I think of all the docos I've made, I'd have to say that's still my favourite. I think it's just a combination of a really good director, Robin being really articulate, um, the fact it was shot on film, um, all those things sort of came together and, and I, yeah, I still think it's, it's my favourite. And the music. Tom Ludvigson and um, Greg Johnson. They just, the music, everything was spot on. Everything really worked on that one. And yeah, I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased with it. I think it's, it just stands up. It's really good. We were given this um, great story and with very little resources. I mean, you know, how Mark managed to tell the story of four people upside down in a boat in the middle of the ocean in a warehouse and God knows where. But Mark's really clever. See, Mark's very smart and he really hones in on the story. He, and, and of course he realised early on that, the, you know, the, the psycho he understood the psychology of the situation. This goes to show a good director, you know, you can have all the money in the world but if, if, you, if the person doesn't know what the story is, it's not going to make any difference. But yeah, I just really enjoyed it. It was, it was good fun, you know. And it was probably one of the first bigger stories I got to tell as well, so it was fun. It was very, quite brave what they did really. I mean, they shot a lot just in Ponsonby and on the street and with real, often I think like real people, not extras, just in the background who didn't know they were there because they were, the camera was a long way away, or driving around and I liked that. And actually coming from a doco background, that doco background helped me a lot then because you, you got a lot less of like, okay, here's, here's take one, slate one, and it's going to be that shot. And then take two, it would be the same slate, but it wouldn't be the same shot at all. In take three, they might do something different. So you had to watch everything. You couldn't just look at a marked up script and it wasn't like a real structured studio shoot. So that I really liked. And consequently, sometimes you got really, really those lucky frames and lucky situations which you, you couldn't plan. And so I really liked the way that, and I also really liked the fact it was shot on film. And, uh, and um, Really, really cool stuff. I think the first block I got to do was with Mark Beasley. I really was excited to work on something based on an area I grew up in. And um, it was fantastic. I really loved doing that series. It was great. Certainly not because I was there, but the second series, it seemed to really find its legs. The first series was great, and it was like growing up in public. So in New Zealand shows, you know, we don't make pilots, so you get to make all your mistakes in front of everyone. And there weren't many in the first series, but the second series, you know, I think it was like everyone, you know, it's like everyone was extra confident because it had been received so well. So there was this confidence and, and perhaps in knowing, oh, this is working and it was great. It was a really great series. That was another one where I just couldn't believe um, my luck because I, I love Super 8, absolutely love it. I love motorcycling. Um, I love motorcycle racing. And here was the story, which was an incredible story. Here was this woman, Janine, who um, had all the Super 8 footage she'd kept. She was telling a story in the 70s and we could illustrate it. We didn't have to do, you know, reenactments. Like, how, how, are you gonna, how are you gonna do that? How are you gonna produce spa, a motorcycle race in Spa in Belgium in the 1970s? And it's like, you know, with what, terrible reenactments, close-ups of speedos and other just bullshit that people tell themselves is gonna convince people that we had the stuff. It was like, wow. And her story was so 
beautiful and, and heartbreaking. It was just... And of course, you know, once again, you know, she was not going to be around. She, so she was telling her story. It was her last chance to tell her story. So there was a big responsibility to, um, to do this, this really well. Technically, it was really challenging. Green screen, lots of green screen. Um, I didn't actually like, I don't actually like dealing with green screen. But there's all these, um, we had, it was well resourced in the post-production department, so I could just cut the show and then send the scenes to another room and they would put all the temporary backgrounds in for arena fights and things like that. So that was good, but nevertheless, it's, when, you, uh, yeah, when you've got a sequence that has got, you know, eight layers of video and 20 tracks of audio, it can get really, um, slow. It was quite eye-opening to see these people who were so good at things like set design and really great DOPs and um, incredible prosthetics people and, and, the, the, and also all the people doing the visual effects. They were all just at, really at the top of their game and you know, it wasn't that, in some ways editing wasn't, you, you'd have to do a pretty crappy job to muck it up. <laughs> The second one, um, Simon Bennett directed, and Simon was really nice. He let me go to set because I was really fascinated to see, you know, how they were blocking things and putting things together. And anyway, so the, I looked at the monitor with Simon, and the car came around the corner, and it came up to camera, and they jumped away. And Simon was like, you know, oh, cut, that, that was pretty good. And, and he was really kindly he said to me, "What do you think?" And I said, "Oh, it's too slow. Car's too slow, and it's stopping too far away." And he said, oh, we'll do it again then. And so he told the driver to go quicker. And I looked at the monitor and I was like, and looked at the shot and I was like, oh, that's good. That looked really good. And I looked up and, yeah, I think all the crew had jumped away from the camera, which I felt, the shot looked good. But, yeah, I felt a bit bad about that, but it was quite funny. But the shot did look better. The cars look really slow on film. We knew there was going to be an audience sitting there waiting to get something, and the 1970s was a totally different era to the era that Outrageous Fortune was set in, and so it was going to be the same area, 1970s, but it's going to be tonally different, just because of the fact it's the, the late 70s, or mid to late 70s. But once again, there was a show that was set in an area I grew up in, and, you know, I really really enjoyed working on that and musically I was like early 1970s was really good for music much no matter no matter what anyone says and I grew up in the 80s the fact that the 80s was 80s music by and large sucked <laughs> it just did the 1970s music was better and the era was more interesting in some ways to me and and you know 1970s was free of so much of the um, concerns that came later in the 80s. So I was really excited to work on it. But yeah, but the challenge, I think, the challenge with it was um, the expectation on it. I think that was the challenge with that, that show. There's definitely differences between directors, but that's, that's a strength. If, if a producer shuts that down, then then the director just becomes a harvester. They're just going to go out, they're going to shoot the day, they're not going to push for anything, you know. All the good directors really annoy producers. If you're getting on with the producer, you bad idea. <laughs> you know, they, sh they should be saying, I want this, and it should be, oh, you can't have that. No, I want that, I'm going to do that. No, no, we don't have that. Well, I want it. You know, they've always got to push to get every little, everything they can um, out of out of their block. So yeah, there's differences, but that's a, that can be a really really good thing if it's not taken like anything to an extreme.